Right, so it is the first of the irons from this 2019 range from Taylor Made, and uh, I'm gonna, it's the M5. I'm gonna start off by throwing some images up on screen for you now, and I think maybe you can start with a comment in terms of what you think this thing looks like in terms of appearance, first and foremost. One of the things that you will pick up on straight away is the speed bridge that has been introduced at the back of this club face. And effectively, it's a strengthening bar. It's something that connects the sole of the club face into the top line. What they're calling their fastest speed pocket um, in terms of being able to maximize distance, strengthen that whole club face, maximize in terms of forgiveness. They've also put um, this high bra, as they call it, compression damper, which is something that they've really looked to work on in terms of improving the sound feel uh, of this club and we'll be interested to see how that works out very very shortly um, speed pocket this is a smaller head design it's a more compact players design I suppose you call it one thing to notice is on the leading edge of the club there's a slightly chamfered um, cutaway almost and it's visible as well in terms of uh, at the impact position with your iron so again that will be aimed at sort of greater and improved turf interaction uh, it's a very neat and compact looking iron, but what about performance? Because that's what we want to know. How will this thing perform? It's a 30 degree seven iron to be strong without being the strongest out there, uh, but we're expecting some decent performance. But how will Speedbridge work? Will it get some performance with off center? It's because I am the man to tell you whether or not it can do that or not. First things first, let's get over to Four Golf Chester before we get out there on the golf course as well, and then back here for an overall summary. So over for Golf Chester and let's get whacking some golf balls. Interesting story as ever from Taylor Made and the introduction of Speedbridge. How much difference will that make? Well, we're soon gonna find out in terms of performance. I do this element of the video for those who not watched before is I'm gonna give you some immediate feedback, not backed up by dry ball data that will come at the very end of this video. So I'm down here at for Golf Chester. We're gonna talk about, first of all, how this club looks at address. Now then, I mentioned in a previous video, in previous videos rather, how much more improved these irons are looking. These sort of, this sits in the middle. This isn't a player's iron as you well know, uh, but it sits somewhere in the middle. Maybe it's aimed at mid handicappers, I don't know, but it's certainly getting more and more compact. That top line is very, very playable. Uh, not a great deal of offset as a dress. It's a neat looking compact iron. But it's thick enough on that top line not to frighten you to death either. So people like myself who like to play the thinner, more compact irons, uh, but are maybe not quite good enough, then this just gives you the sort of somewhere in between and gives you that element of confidence at address that you've got a bit of meat behind the ball. But let's see how this thing performs in the hands of the average golfer. A little bit heavy, that one. It's gone out there, still going out there. Now this is a seven iron. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'll hit a few, I'll have to get a few decent golf balls because that wasn't a great start. Hit a few more balls and then I'm out there on the course and I've got a, a five iron and a nine iron that we'll try out there on the course. Again, just that little bit heavy in terms of strike. Very similar in terms of where both of those have gone out, but uh, I've been hitting the ball very, very well this morning and uh, not just caught them a little bit too heavy. Let's see if we can get decent contact on this one that's a golf shot that's a golf shot interesting ball flight because for me um, and this is where I've done these videos before where loft doesn't necessarily relate to launch and 28 and a half degree on the uh, M6 iron 7 iron that is 30 degree on the M5 and for me I'd like to know in dry ball data how much difference there is in launch because they've got similar ball flights for me. It's a good shot as well. Right, we've got two decent shots that we can give some feedback on. Big difference with the irons is twofold. They look, I, I love the look of this iron. Uh, I like how compact it looks for this style of iron, but it's sound and feel, it's improved massively. It's a massive tick in the box for me because they're now getting, ticking all the boxes in terms of building an iron for the average golfer that literally has its power packed, it launches well, it's got a big sweet spot, and now they're packing in some uh, nice feel and sound as well. What more do we want? 
I think uh, we are really pushing the boundaries now in terms of what you can get into a golf club. How much further can we go? Anyway, out there on the golf course is the next part of the test with five, seven and nine, nine in real conditions, hitting in some greens, playing off some fairways, playing off some tees. And let's see how this thing performs in the hands of the average golfer. Right, quick sit down to do a bit of a uh, feedback straight off the course with the M5 irons and uh, I think I've been hitting the ball fairly well this morning as I was in the driving range yesterday so it's, uh, is that good or bad way to test clubs I'm not so sure. Um, big thing with the M5 is how compact it is, how playable it is. We talk about players irons, game improvement irons, what category does this fit in because it's a sort of, for me it's almost like a players iron with plenty of uh, help packed into it which is the ideal scenario I think feel is really really good uh, we talked about this sort of whatever material is inside this club head whatever they've done has made an impact in and whether it's speed bridge in terms of taking vibration away uh, not many of you will buy into that no doubt but whatever the, the sound and feel is very very good uh, it performed well very well again really impressed with this uh, these m5 irons they took what they did last year uh, in terms of the m3s and it's got that little bit better yet again so uh, right i can't say too much because we need to do a summary let's get back inside where it's a little bit warmer five irons on the course dry ball data is collected you'll see that uh, very very shortly um but overall opinion first and let's looks looks superb we're getting very much into a position i think uh, in the, in the years ahead months ahead even i don't know where the sort of player's iron for me is becoming extinct because of this type of club it's it's there's far too much assistance if you like um packed into this type of club in such a small compact design and with the improved sound and feel i just do think it will be a come a time when the sort of player's iron if you like is going to struggle to exist and player's iron um it's it, you've got that thin top line there is it's got a little bit of bulk about it but that's about all you would say a little bit of bulk when it's sat behind the ball it's very compact indeed and the big thing for me in this it's not about performance in terms of well there's one element of performance actually it's not a distance club it's a 30 degree seven iron so it's obviously strongly lofted but this is all about two things the massive difference is sound and feel whatever whether it be to do with the speed bridge whether it be to do with the insert with inside the head i don't know i don't really care what i can tell you is there is a massive difference in improvement in sound and feel from last year's model but also just into this category of iron they've really done a good job with that and then the second thing which is hugely different for me for those of you who watch the video is i'm going to throw up some dry ball data numbers now the only column worth looking at is the spin number Averaging 5.8 spin, a lot of those numbers in there up and above 6,000. People who watch my videos know that I really struggle to put spin, um, a, 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 a decent spin number on uh, when I do iron testing. And that's a really good number for me. The consistency out the club was incredible in terms of carry distance. This idea that, and also ball speeds, this idea that these kind of clubs are inconsistent in terms of dispersions, front and back. I think those things are a thing of the past. And this was an absolute solid performer, uh, dry ball data wise and out on the course. 
very difficult to be critical of this one. For me, like I said, I was a big fan of last year's M3 and M4 irons, to be honest with you. I thought they were really, really good. And what they've done is they've took, they've raised the bar with the both products, can't spoiler alert on M6, but they've raised the bar. It's as simple as that. How is that bar big enough to justify them? Well, that's up to you to decide, but I'm telling you in terms of performance wise, this is a marked improvement yet again on these sets of irons, perform really, really well indeed. And to see that sort of spin number on that type of club, uh, absolutely superb. Really like the way these things are going. Anyway, thumbs up for me on the M5 irons. I am gonna continue with this mammoth few days of club testing. Um, unbelievable, because we've got, I don't know, eight videos on TaylorMade, and then surprisingly, there's a lot more to come tomorrow as well.